I bring this up all the time and I, I'm going to like also bring this up later, but I feel like maybe almost it needs to be repeatedly said over and over throughout time. As we keep doing this channel, people don't understand overdue is dangerous. Like there is just this huge, huge myth misconception around overdue. We have like this olden day thing of like, it's fine to go to 41, 42, whatever. It's fine. Just wait it out. Induction's bad. So we have like that whole old style, outdated misinformation, misinformed stuff that things have changed. Medical has changed. We know better, but people like to argue with me about overdue being dangerous. And I'm like, it's dangerous. And, you know, and then I'll hear different reasons of like stuff that happens, but I'm like, yes, all of it has to do with being overdue (laughs) hypertension, like fluid things, placenta problems, like all, there's so many things that it can happen from being overdue and people like want to argue. So I feel like we need to just randomly here and there pepper in (laughs) episodes talking about being overdue and why it's dangerous. And like, keep just giving the information of like, we need to keep like informing each other that this is dangerous. And we have the arrive trial for a reason because doctors have learned inducing at 39 weeks gives the placenta and the baby better time to actually have a vaginal birth versus 40 weeks or 41 induction. And then now the placenta is not functioning as good as it was before. Now baby has chances of going to stress. And now more likely you're going to end up with an emergency C-section, which wanted to be avoided the whole thing of induction, or you just would have went in for a C-section anyway. Well, (laughs) something else we can talk about is meconium, which is basically feces. So your baby isn't actually eating anything as such, but the liver one of the things your liver does is your body generates your blood cells your red blood cells your white blood cells your platelets your red blood cells have a limited lifespan after they're done with their use by date they are the liver processes your old red blood cells and they are excreted in your feces you poop them out. This is why when babies are born and they have neonatal jaundice, it's important to feed them because they're eliminating that jaundice, that waste product through your feces. So your baby's in utero, it's growing, its liver is doing its thing, it's pushing stuff out into your colon and your intestines. And the longer your baby is in utero, there's a greater chance that they will expel meconium into the amniotic fluid, which is not good. And if they become distressed for any reason, there's a greater chance they will expel meconium into the fluid. So one of the reasons that getting baby out before it's going post dates and becomes distressed because of placenta insufficiency is because of meconium. It's not always a big deal, but meconium aspiration syndrome, MAS, is a big deal and has a pretty high fatality rate if your baby has to go on ECMO for it. Not as bad as some things, but it's pretty bad. So leaving early to avoid the brush, leaving early to avoid placenta issues, leaving early to avoid meconium aspiration, getting baby out when baby is mature, they don't get any more mature after 39 weeks, they're just as mature as they're ever going to be, is a good thing because you are avoiding problems that can happen. No one's gonna tell you that they will happen, but they are preventable by having a 39 week induction or 40 week induction if you belong to a country that doesn't believe in 39 week inductions without quote unquote medical cause. Medically necessary. It's like, because baby's ready to come out there's no reason to keep them in any longer. So yeah, there was, um, I can't remember, it was some lactivist 
who posted this big story about stuff, 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 stuff. Um, she went to 42 weeks and they induced her and there was a cascade of interventions and she had to have a stat C section and then she had lactation issues and then she went into a spiral of anxiety and depression and I'm sitting here and I went back and I said listen if she had been induced at 39 weeks she probably would have had a vaginal birth instead she was pregnant for three more weeks and ended up with a stat C section I don't know about you I've had a stat C section I would have been happier being induced at 39 weeks Yes, me too. I totally agree. (laughs) Like now that I know that, like, because I mean, I was in the community of like, just wait it out. But now that I know, and I've actually heard of like talking to some doctors of how they do induction. So people like think like you're going to get induced, you're on a time limit and all this different stuff. And I did learn. um, So at 39 weeks, they can induce you. And as long as you're doing good, and baby's doing good and everything is looking good and all like numbers and heart, everything is like where it's supposed to be. You can actually be doing your thing for a couple days or whatever's needed. They're not going to push you. They're not going to pressure you. They're going to be watching, monitoring, making sure it's processing. Like it's like, we're going somewhere and stuff like that. And I've heard of like people that they take like a couple days or they take whatever to like, they build, they, it's like a slow build. And as long as everything's good, guess what? They end up going, they get their vaginal birth. Everything is like whatever, but at like 40 weeks, now that we're like a week later, I've heard of like people going to be induced and they do kind of have to put a time limit on it because they have to look at all the different things going on of like, now the sun is not as good. Like things, things have changed. And we've learned from any doctor you talk to, they're like, this is your due date but we don't actually know if that's your date that you actually conceived. Everybody's body's a little bit different. You could have conceived days before you could have conceived days after we really don't know. So we just kind of like, this is our guess, our estimate like date. So you're safer to go a little bit before the due date to not actually reach the due date to give you more of a chance and not also put you on that time limit where they're, where the doctor's kind of like, okay, you got like, you know, we've heard of that. You only got a couple more hours and then we're going to have to give you a C-section or something, but because it kind of, it's the change, it changes. And they're also watching all those things, how you're doing, how baby's doing all that. And I, and that's the thing is I think people get confused of, like you were saying, the cascade of interventions. If you get induced, if you get an epidural, that just means you're going to get a C-section people just like, it's just happening. You're going to whatever. And it's like actually looking at like most of my friends that have had vaginal births, they've been induced and they had an epidural. <laughs> I, I can't you, tell you. you mean it works? <laughs> yeah. It's good. I can't tell you like very many that have either didn't have one or the other, or they had both. Like, I don't actually know very many people that have had a vaginal birth without one or the other, like they've, or both of them. Like, so it just kind of one of those, like it, it happened. So when that whole thing of the whole C-section thing, it is about time. It's about where it's about you, timing. It's exactly about at getting to that. We like to say in the VBAC group, stars aligned. Some people need to have their stars really well aligned to get their vaginal birth. But most of the time, they just have to mostly align. I mean, the one thing that cracked me up is there'd be people who would be like, it's because you were induced. Because if you had gone into labor labor naturally, you wouldn't have this cascade of interventions. I was like, that's funny. I went into labor naturally at 40 and six. And I ended up with a stat C-section and my baby almost died. So I don't know. It seems to be that natural labor was the reason something happened. And it wasn't any of those cascades of interventions. (laughs) I was like, uh, yeah, well, can't blame the cascade of interventions what happened to my kid must have been something else maybe mother nature screwed up yep i hate to say that 
people are just scared of like medical anything. And we like this whole like natural, like minded, like if I don't get induced, I won't get a C-section. Like they're like, they're somehow connected. Or if I don't get pain relief, I'm not going to get a C-section. Like the people, like they try to connect things that aren't really there because they're all individual things that not everyone is getting. <laughs> not everyone's getting induced. Yeah. Not everyone is getting yes. an epidural and not everybody's getting a C-section, but they somehow connect them in their mind of like, well, if I just avoid this, I'll avoid this. I just had somebody comment about that the other day where they were literally saying their induction went without whatever way and it ended up being, tra- they were like, next time, I think I'm going to wait longer. And then I was like, and then I had to explain like waiting, like you kind of were doing was why you ended up ended with up the cascade. And if you wait longer, cause they thought, Oh my, cause they said my doctor had a cutout date. Like, this is the day that like, this is as far as you're going to go. And we're going to indu- induce. And they thought that was because of that inducing thing. That's what started all these other things. And I was like, no, your doctor's trying to do stuff before you end up with those problems. But if you just wait even longer, you're going to have even more problems than you had the first time, like around, like, so it's like, and explain this to people. I was like, I know it sounds whatever, but if you can get in before you're in that area where it's like, you know, and it, and another thing is like what people don't think about at 39 weeks, your baby's done. Like your baby is fully developed. Your baby is the weight they're going to be like everything, everything inside their body is the way it is. Like that's how it's going to be developed another week, another week after that, or another week after that, or whatever time afterwards makes no difference. But I can tell you with personal experience that being overdue or being post dates is extremely uncomfortable. Like, because there's just no point. And you're just carrying around this kid for more weeks. And like, it's like at the end, you're already miserable. There's really no point to be more miserable for another week to whatever. Like, there's just no point because you can get the baby out and everybody's fine and everything's good, which was your whole point of being pregnant. (laughs) The whole point of being pregnant is baby. Do you like how you explain the meconium thing? Because I think people don't understand it. And I think that's, you know what I mean? Which is understandable. I know it's like, I still kind of learn about it too, because I'm like, I, I know it's happened to me. I know it's, you know, it's happened to people I know. And it's, it gets kind of confusing if you're not like a medical person, like looking at it. You don't want the baby to poop in the pool. Okay. (laughs) Don't poop in the pool. (laughs) There you go. So that's a, that's what it's like, but I, I can't believe how many people have told me, no, your kid didn't die from being overdue. Yeah, he did. (laughs) That's exactly what happened. And all the things that happened was from being overdue. All those things that's labeled underneath with the fluid and, you know, with meconium, it's all from being overdue period. Like it all connects the dots of that's what they are. (laughs)